welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our special guest back today, Tyler O'Neill, author, commentator, famous person for many appearances across media, including Fox News with Tucker Carlson. Welcome back, Tyler. Hey, glad to be here. Tell our audience, before we jump into this, um, the title of the book and where they can find it. Yeah, again, this is Making Hate Pay, The Corruption of the Southern Poverty Law Center. If you search on Google or you search on Amazon.com, Making Hate Pay, it is the first result. Uh, so go check it out, buy a copy, write a review, uh, let the world know. I hope our audience listens. They need to know about this. So let's talk about the hate list, the list of haters that SPLC puts out that gets quoted by, well, all of the mainstream media. Um, who's on it that shouldn't be? <laughs> a lot of people. Uh, so some of the ones that I always go back to, there's the most notorious, I think, is the Family Research Council. And they are a conservative Christian nonprofit organization in Washington, D.C. And they actually were targeted by... Um, by a, a crazy person who went in with a with a semi-automatic pistol and tried to shoot everyone in the building and put a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich by their heads. And he later testified in court that he got the idea to kill them by citing from the SPLC's hate group list. Uh, but there are many other groups on the list. Um, you have Jihad Watch, uh, the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Uh, and most specifically, you know, th there are some groups like Alliance Defending Freedom, which has played a role in 56 Supreme Court victories, 10 in the last decade. And Alliance Defending Freedom is listed as an anti-LGBT hate group. But even, even important liberals like a ACLU former president Nadine Strawson has come out and said, look, SPLC, I like you. I agree with you on most things, but ADF is not a hate group. Like, what are you smoking? Uh, and so that's, that's kind of how extreme they've gotten. And in one case, they called the Ruth Institute, which is a small Catholic nonprofit down in Louisiana. They called them a hate group. And in order to bolter their claim, they quoted the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which is the document that determines roughly what one billion Christians across the world believe. So if the SPLC were to be consistent, they would need to claim that the entire Catholic Church is also a hate group. Wow. So I, I've heard and read about the turnover in management. Uh, Morris Dees, the guy that put this all together, who created this monster international hundred million dollar uh, slush fund offshore. Is he gone from the SPLC? He is. Uh, he was fired in, get this, a racial discrimination and sexual harassment scandal in 2019 that for some reason, the media that is obsessed with Me Too claims and racial discrimination claims decided not to cover. And surprise, surprise, just a few months later, the media cites them. I mean, this was, I believe it was last October. Uh, SPLC and the Council on American Islamic Relations came out with this report saying, oh no, uh, Act for America is going to have an event at Mar-a-Lago. They're a hate group. We have to stop this at all costs. And, Mar and the New York Times essentially ran the story like the press release from these two liberal organizations that are both racked by scandal. And two Florida papers, the Palm Beach Post and the Miami Herald, did the same. And, and Mar-a-Lago caved. The Trump organization caved. And this is, you know, Act for America is a group that the SPLC has been lying about for years. Like in 2018, they disbanded their chapters. But the SPLC's get this, the SPLC's map, their list of hate groups still claims that there are 47 different hate groups. Oh, sorry, no, that was 2018. In 2019, they claimed that there are 39 separate hate groups 
under the Act for America banner. I mean, this is, but, but the New York Times doesn't care that there was this racial discrimination and sexual harassment scandal. They don't care that the SPLC is lying specifically in this case. They're still going to run the story and use their pressure to get this event canceled. So, so Morris got pushed out for doing exactly what they really dislike other people doing, right? Being racially and sexually insensitive or abusive. Who's running the place now? Yeah, they just grabbed a new president and CEO, Margaret Huang, who was the chief executive at Amnesty International. So, you know, Amnesty International, which has a similar story to the SPLC, started with noble intentions, did a lot of good work at the beginning, but then drifted ever more to the left and now pushes this anti-American agenda that essentially is saying that other countries are better than us on human rights, which is, you know, in many cases, just absurd and laughable. But yeah, that, that shows you, you know, the SPLC, and they went for a woman and a minority because they knew, oh, we got to cover our bases. But they, they did an internal review. They promised an internal review when they fired Morris Dees. Guess where that review is? I haven't seen it. I've been following this. I get, you know, notifications. I've, they have not released it. It's been over a year. It's been, let's see, it's July. It's been 16 months, and they haven't released this internal review. They're never going to release this internal review. No, why, why should they? So let, let's talk about a couple of the groups you touched on, like Act for America and Jihad Watch. It seems to me that anybody that calls out what radical Islam is, what they stand for, um, quotes their writings, quotes the speeches of their leaders, is a hate monger. What is the SPL stance, SPLC stance on Islam and Jihad uh, versus their stance on Israel and Zionism? <sighs> well, the SPLC doesn't take a stance on Israel, which is convenient for the SPLC, uh, but they do take a stance defending Muslims from any such claims, uh, and even when the claims are true. And they really follow CARE on this, the Council on American Islamic Relations. But I think the biggest, the biggest moment that stands out to me They've labeled Ayan Hirsi Ali, an anti-Muslim extremist, and they labeled Majid Nawaz, who was a, you know, he, he actually was an extremist. He was a jihad terrorist. And then he saw the light and realized the evils that he was perpetrating and switched sides. And now he's still a Muslim, but he's fighting against radical Islam. And the SPLC attacked him as an anti-Muslim extremist because, I, I guess, because he's not a Muslim, an Islamic terrorist anymore. Uh, but they, they eventually, you know, they got sued for defamation over it. And they had to pay a multi-million dollar settlement and do this very embarrassing, um, you know, apology retraction. But this is the kind of thing that they do. And they will attack anyone who speaks up and who like, you know, like Robert Spencer, not to be confused with Richard Spencer. And look, I, I really like reformist Muslims. I think there are a lot of Muslim reformers out there, but you have to be careful because taqiyya is also a thing. So some Muslims are going to lie about their real stances and the threat of radical Islamic terror and Islamism in general is dangerous and needs to be called out, the SPLC is in the business of silencing those who call it out. And I was really, really thankful to M. Zudi Jasser uh, for, he's, he's a devout Muslim uh, who runs this group, I, I'm having trouble remember, the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. And he endorsed my book because he's been you know, on the f front lines fighting this and seeing what the SPLC and CARE and these organizations do to silence dissent on this issue. I know a lot of the people you've just mentioned, they're good people, and I would believe them. 
Thanks for joining us today on ATP Report and a special thank you to Tyler O'Neill with his fabulous new book out on the Southern Poverty Law Center. Go to Amazon, I urge you to go get it. And for those of you that haven't signed up yet for our text message alert system, please take out your cell phone, type the word truth, send it to 88202 and push send. You'll be automatically subscribed. All the content will come to your cell phone absolutely free. You don't have to do anything but look down at your phone in your left hand. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.